Everyone, welcome to the Lost World Museum. We are live on TikTok and I'm going to show you some things perhaps you've never seen before. My name is John Adolfi and we discuss origins. Apes, aliens, or Adam? Sorry for the reverse, but you get the idea. Did we come from an ape-like creature three to four million years ago? Or perhaps it was, you know, a, uh, an alien that came down, as the theorists say, and uh, believe in 35,000 years ago, there was some kind of intervention with outer space beings that helped us along in our evolutionary track. And also, there's the atom theory. What is that? That means that six to 10,000 years ago, we were created, life on Earth started. People ask, well, how old is the rock? And I tell people, you know what? It could be a trillion years old. It could be 10,000 years old. It could be something in between, I don't know. But that's granite. You know, if you go with the atom theory, which is creationism, it basically says that the earth was without form and void before anything took place. Now, some have suggested that that is within the 10,000 year period. Others think that that's a little bit uh, too narrow and that perhaps it's been here as an ice ball for a very long time waiting for, for life to be set up. We just got back, my wife Kristen and I, from the Paluxy River not the river, we didn't go there just for the river, but the river was the main focus of our, our attention. We went to a dinosaur track dig, which means that we were taking overburden and removing it with a group of about 50 other people, and we were looking for dinosaur tracks, dinosaur fossils, bones, uh, and anything else we could find. It was fascinating. I'm gonna show you the sandstone excuse me, the limestone from the area. Now, this is in Glen Rose, Texas, about an hour and 20 minutes south of uh, Dallas. It was hot, it was humid, and we, for five days, three to four hours a day, we were shoveling mud, and then in a, in a row of, say, 15, 20 people, we were handing each other buckets of mud to put into a payloader, and then they hauled it off, and then they came back, and we continued doing that all morning till noontime, then we were given uh, the ability to break. <laughs> they called it slave labor and it was really funny because that's exactly what it was like. The first day of doing it, I wasn't too sure about it. I sit at a desk most of the time. So to get out there and do that, I'm not afraid of working out or work, but this is different. Three hours or four hours of something like that. It's like hard labor. But the second day was awesome and it continued on. Did we find anything? Yes, we did. We found a hadrosaur about a foot long, a hadrosaur print. And in the upcoming videos that we're doing or have already published, you'll be able to see it. Now, let me show you what the limestone looks like there. And I think it is absolutely beautiful. The reason why I think it's so beautiful is because it is, you know, like whitish in color. And it's just, it's just like, it looks pure, you know? And when you see a dinosaur track in this, it's remarkable, absolutely remarkable. You've got to check out uh, our playlist called Everything Dinosaurs, and we're gonna be putting more up there, but check out, um, you know, the uh, videos on YouTube here uh, at our channel, and you will find some of the uh, footage, a lot more is coming. On the side of the road, another thing was really cool. People built, not a number of them, I'd say we saw two or three, three, three houses built out of petrified wood. When I say that, people have a hard time getting their bearing because we saw it. But to describe it and then to process that, you're wondering, what are you talking about? You've seen petrified wood before, right? It's rock, basically. It's stone now. It was a living matter at one time, but it's been replaced with minerals and uh, the switcheroo allowed it to become very beautiful rock, so to speak. The outside of their homes were being, uh, or were constructed, not with stone, but petrified wood. I was like, what? A house built out of petrified wood? Yeah, I'm talking about the exterior. So instead of building it with stone and cement, they use cement and petrified wood. Crazy. We've got a video of it. We're going to be posting that here. We've got a lot of footage, folks. 
On the side of the road, there was a fossil place that sold petrified wooden fossils. Here's another example of the petrified wood that you find in Glen Rose, Texas. It's beautiful. All right, let's get, to, let's get right down to it. In Glen Rose, it's a hotbed of dinosaur tracks, especially. There have been found over 500 dinosaur tracks, mainly um, sauropod, which is like your stegosaurus and, or your, or your uh, brachiosaurus, then your uh, uh, acrocanthosaurus, uh, and those um, are like T-Rexes, three-toed, and then your hadrosaur, again, three-toed. And the three-toed uh, footprints seem to dominate uh, the uh, Paluxy River bed or shore, and even in the uh, stream itself. And when it dries up, there's fossil tracks of dinosaurs all over. And they have found 90 human tracks. But the thing is, folks, it's in the same strata. Limestone is anywhere between 70 to 140 million years old if you're using modern day geological timetable. Not the biblical or creationist timetable, that's different. I'm using the evolutionary timetable to prove a point, and that is in this type of stone, you shouldn't find anything that's human. Why? Because according to evolution, humans lived three to four million years old is when they got their foot to look more like our feet today. And you that's as far back as you can go. Even the most humanoid of hominids, how's that? You're only going back six million years ago, maybe? So when you have something that's 70 to 140 million years old, and I believe that they have uh, dated it, I'm talking geologists now, uh, evolutionary geologists, they've dated it at 108, I believe, million years old, this limestone. Nothing human should appear in it. And yet, in back of me, I'm going to show you three examples of where that uh, does not pertain in and around the Paluxy River in Glen Rose, Texas. Let me share with you one example. <clears throat> Now, this is not the same color as this would have been found. This would have been more, more limestone-ish or whatever. This is a 16 and a half inch footprint, human footprint. Now, how do we know that these aren't carved? That's something I learned while I was there and I found it very interesting. When you have these CAT scanned or if you cut them and examine the wall as you cut it in half and look at the other piece, you know, like you look at it, cross-section. There's got to be compression going on with the mud between the toes, the feet, or it's a carving. Carving can't create compression. Only a footprint in mud can. We have some examples of actual, <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, actual footprint in mud, my wife, alongside um, footprints that were found in the Paluxy in and around the Paluxy that were human, that, were, that are in strata that shouldn't be there. This is a giant human footprint. This one right here was found in 1964, and it went to the World's Fair in 1965 and was never seen since, but they did get a, um, a concrete cast of it before it uh, was on display. This was cut out of the uh, Glen Rose area and the 16 and a half inch foot would equate to approximately a nine foot man or woman. <laughs> so that certainly is interesting. Now, what I'm about to show you is, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this up here and I'm gonna just bring it right over. What I'm gonna show you is an Acrocanthosaurus and this Acrocanthosaurus footprint is a little obscured. You're gonna have a harder time seeing it. But when you see, when I tell you the story of what this print is all about, I think you'll find it very interesting. So let's go ahead and look at it now. All right, so this right here, zoom out just a little bit. Imagine if you would, these right here are the three, here's the heel right here, okay? Right down here. And the footprint goes this way. The middle toe right here, left toe, 
right toe. Now, they found this, and they knew about it. They cleaned it out some, because you got to clean the mud out. You got to scoop it out, and you just got to keep cleaning until it's clean. But they never cleaned it completely, and they didn't know it. A woman was assigned to re-clean it out because they do fill in over the years. New sediment comes in and she was cleaning it and, they, and she said, I'm not, ha I'm not finding the bottom. And they said, well, keep cleaning. <laughs> so she said, okay. So she kept cleaning and cleaning. And there was this depression right here that is not normal with an uh, Acrocanthosaurus footprint. She alerted them, they came over to it they called up one of the paleontologists that does the uh, molding, which did this mold, and they said, Joe Taylor from the Mount Blanco Museum, get back here. He turned his car around, came back, and he did a mold of this. This is what they found. When you see the original, which we have video of, you will notice that this right here fits in there most perfectly. This right here and the area this fills is not a part of this footprint. What happened was the dinosaur print was placed, okay? So the dinosaur footprint pressed the, the material in very deeply, and then something not as heavy and smaller than the dinosaur came and stepped inside the print. And when they took this area that is not native to the Acrocanthosaurus print, this is what they came up with. It's a nine inch or size seven, what they believe a woman's footprint. All right, if that wasn't crazy enough, and wait till I show you more evidence from the Creation Evidence Museum, which is right on the Paluxy Riverbed in Glen Rose, Texas, we've got more videos that we're gonna be showing and sharing with you. I'm gonna show you something else that was found not in Glen Rose, but in the area. I found out something new about this. This is a handprint in limestone and sandstone. It's a combination. And what's interesting about this is, is that I thought this was, as I've said in my other videos, so I've got an update. I thought this was 100, and, 100 to 140 million years old, according to evolutionary geology. It's not, it's found in, this was found in a layer of stone that's Ordovian. Ordovian means that it is about 350 to 400 million years old. Something is wrong with our dating system, or that can't even be a lizard, folks. There was no lizard with a, with a, a lizard print that looks like a human handprint that long ago. Does that look like anything other than a hand? When they poured latex into the original, and we have footage of the original that we at the Creation Evidence Museum, the cuticle is seen when the rubber mold cast, I guess you could say, was pulled out, and they looked at it, and they could see the cuticle right there. This is, my hand's a little bit too big, but it looks like somebody was either falling down or getting up, and they were pressing. Look at that. Not everything is what it seems, folks. And so I just want to leave you with this. Feel free to continue to not only subscribe, but also to comment and join in on the conversation. This is just the beginning. As we continue to grow and build the YouTube channel on these subjects and more, you're going to see more fantastic and incredibly and interesting, compelling evidence that suggests that perhaps we came from Adam and Eve and there was a worldwide flood 4,500 years ago and that we were created. But until then, let's keep an open mind and ask the question, is it apes, aliens, or Adam? It's not up to a priest or a preacher or a scientist or a teacher to make, up that, make that decision for you. It's up to you. You're the one who has to answer that for yourself, not anyone else. I'm John Adolfi with the Lost World Museum. I want to thank you for attending this live event, and uh, we'll see you next time.